Good morning, and welcome to Oak Grove United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Heather, and I'm so glad that you have chosen to spend a portion of your Sunday morning here with us, or whatever other time this happens to be. And I've got my rainbow stole on this morning because this morning would normally be the day of the Portland Pride Parade. So I want to say to any of you who might not be familiar with our church, I would so be there. And we love you exactly as you are. I also want to say Happy Father's Day to all our dads and father figures out there. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about what it means to be a good dad later in this service. Let us begin with the call to worship. God calls us to clear a path for one another. So we can bring our whole selves to worship. Love unfolds as an access ramp, live stream, blankets in the park. Through accessibility, we make a way to be together. We dress in trousers, skirts, glitter, simplicity. We come as we are, beloved and accepted. God delights in our shifting shapes. How we rearrange to include the whole. Good morning, Story. How, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm really excited to be here in Portland again. I've been in Texas for a long time and now I'm back so I can be here with you this Sunday and with our friends out there at Oak Grove United Methodist Church. So I am so excited to be here. Well, I'm excited you're here too. Thank you. And what have you been up to? Well, right now I was trying to decide what I'm going to write in my Father's Day card. Ah, well, that's a good thing to be thinking about because it is Father's Day. It is. And you know, all this Father's Day talk got me wondering about something else. Well, what did it have you thinking about? Well, um, you know how sometimes we call God Father? Mm-hmm, that's right. And I know that here at Oak Grove, we don't just use the word Father. We use a lot of different words to talk about God. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people I know do just call God Father. So I was wondering, does, does that does that mean that God is a man? Well, you know, that's a really good question. And um, no, is the, the quick answer to that question. God is not a man. And you're right. We do use very expansive language for how we understand God here. So sometimes it's father. Sometimes it's mother. He or she. We talk about God fathering us and mothering us. And the truth is, that's because all of those on their own are too small to un for us to understand God. They're just ways, language we can give to how we relate to God that makes sense to us. But using just one of them would be way too small and put, put God in a box that is way too small for God. So you're right. We use that very expansive language um, as a metaphor for us to understand how God feels about us and um, how we feel about God and how we relate to God. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So what does it mean when we say God is like a father sometimes? Well, I'm gonna ask you a question. Um, what are some of the things your father does that, make he, that makes you feel loved and special? Well, sometimes my dad and I do fight and we don't always get along. <laughs> That's okay. Like, I don't like it whenever he tells me I have to go to bed at a good hour or I'm not allowed to watch any more TV or when I have to eat healthy food that I don't like. Well, you know, that's really normal. It doesn't mean you don't love your dad and that your dad doesn't love you. Oh yeah, I love my dad and I know he loves me. And how does your dad show that to you? Well, at the end of the day, I know my dad is always gonna be there for me when I need him to give me good advice when I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I know my dad's gonna show up to my soccer games and my choir concerts to cheer me on. And yeah. sometimes he writes little notes in the, that he leaves in my lunch that make me smile. And sometimes he'll even sit up with me and read if there's a storm outside that makes me feel really scared. And you know, that's one of the things we're talking about when we talk about how God fathers us, that feeling of being loved and safe and held. And we hope that when we talk about God fathering us for someone like you, what that's what that will bring up. That feeling of even when there's a scary storm outside, I am not alone. Yeah, and that's exactly how my dad makes me feel. It is. And it's a really important feeling for you to have. 
And it's so good that your father loves you in that way, with that compassion and that kindness, with that same love that God loves you with. And later, Pastor Heather's going to talk about how people show that love in a lot of different ways. That there's no one way for a dad or a dad figure to show you that love, but that they're going to do it in a bunch of different ways. And all of those ways are good if they make you feel that way, that make you feel love and safe. Oh, what's a, what do you mean when you say a dad figure? Oh, that's another great question because... Like we talked about with mothers, not all families look the same. Sometimes that dad love that you're getting is coming from your biological dad, your stepdad, an uncle, a granddad, a mentor, a Sunday school teacher, whoever it might be. Because because not all families look the same. And, And that's okay, right? It's more than okay. What makes someone a dad is is how they love you and how they make you feel. And and dads, just like moms and everyone else in this world, they don't have to be perfect. They're gonna mess up. You're gonna fight sometimes. You're not gonna get it right every time. But what is most important is what we talked about earlier, that whoever that person is in your life is loving you in a way that makes you feel held and safe and unconditionally supported and is gonna make sure that you're not alone. That's how God loves you. Oh, I get it. So God loves me like a good father should, and a good father loves me like God does. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm grateful to have people that love me like that, and I'm grateful my dad does. Maybe maybe I should put that in the Father's Day card, too. Thank him for the ways he loves me in that selfless, kind, and compassionate way. I think your dad would really love that. And, and why don't, while we're together, we thank God for those people that love us in that way you just said. I would love that. And it's, it's really good to have you back, Story. I'm glad I could see you. And uh, tell Lily I say hi when you go back to Texas, okay? All right, I will. All right, let's pray together, okay? Sounds good. All right. Dear God, thank you for loving us with a love that is compassionate and big and kind. Dear God, thank you for loving us with a love that is compassionate and big and kind. A love that keeps us safe and lets us know that we are not alone. A love that keeps us safe and lets us know that we are not alone. Thank you so much for all those dads and dad figures who have loved us in that way. Thank you so much for all of those dads and dad figures that have loved us in that way. And please be with all those that are spending this Father's Day hurt or confused or grieving. And please be with everyone who's spending Father's Day alone or hurt or grieving. And surround them with your love and surround them with all of your love and remind them that they are not alone and let them know that they are not alone amen amen all right well we'll see you next sunday yeah bye friends see you next time bye a reading from mark 4 verses 35 through 41 On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him up and said to him, teacher, Do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? God's word for all people. Thanks be to God. I can just barely remember being four or five years old and falling asleep in the car and being carried to bed in my father's arms. 
For me, it was the boneless security of being warm, dry, and drowsy as my father wrapped his jacket around me and hunched over me to keep the rain off and the rocking of his steps was a comforting lullaby that was briefly interrupted by the slight shock of the cool sheets beneath me and then a warm tucking in. When I read this passage where Jesus calmed the storm, it brought back to me that sense of security. And I get it. I understand why people call God Father. There's something very primal, very deep in our inner selves that longs for the boneless security of a child. That longing for someone who can calm the storms of life never really goes away, does it? When we are small, our parents, if they are good parents, embody security, trust, and safety. But growing up means discovering that our parents are, after all, only human. Growing up means learning that the man who could protect me from the rain could not protect me from all the complexities of life. And this is part of why it's so hard to be a teenager, and it's so hard to be the parent of a teenager, <laughs> having been both of those now, because teenagers are realizing that their parents are only human at the very same time that most parents are ourselves realizing that our careers, our appearance, our finances, our lives, it's all maybe not as good as we would hoped it would be. <laughs> so families with teens are kind of a perfect storm of insecurity. All of the expectations that our culture lays on us to be perfect parents and perfect young people, whew, they're not helping any of us. So in college, when I was still kind of in that, teenage mindset. I was part of an evangelical campus fellowship, and evangelical as in speaking in tongues and really good worship and nice music and, and strong small groups and a rather fundamentalist understanding of gender roles. I felt led to pray for a young man who was clearly upset during the prayer time. So I, I laid my hand on his shoulder and I prayed. And afterwards he thanked me and we started chatting after the service. And he told me his story of why he felt so upset. He felt tremendous shame because his father was unemployed and on disability. And he felt tremendous pressure to grow up fast and get a good degree and be a better man than his father because the fundamentalist gender roles that he had been raised with told him that the definition of a real man is to provide for their family. His father had a pretty serious physical condition that was not his fault. But his son was convinced that his father wasn't a real man because his dad couldn't just push through the pain and get a job. Even in my evangelical days, I could see that this was not good theology. A man's worth is not based on his career. Nobody's worth regardless of our various genders, is based on our job or our income. Nobody's worth in the kingdom of God is based on any of those external things. We are all of sacred worth simply because God made us. Yet so many of us, men especially, have been taught that to be a man is to be a provider, a protector, to be powerful and invulnerable. We have been taught that men should never cry, 
that men should never show pain, that men should never be wrong, that men should never back down. And these toxic expectations for men to show godlike strength have left whole generations of men unable to show their love to their children or admit their mistakes or even admit that they need to go to the doctor. This toxic masculinity has harmed the men who try to live up to these expectations and those who love them because it normalizes aggressive behavior and it limits the approved emotions that men are allowed to have to just happiness or anger. But as St. Oscar Romero said, there are many things that can only be seen through eyes that have cried. There are many things that can only be seen through eyes that have cried. The truth that we learn when we parent our own children is that the comforting lullaby of those rocking steps that carry our children safely to bed is often the struggling waddle of a parent holding on with every bit of strength that we have. The truth that blustering confidence often hides a world of insecurities. And that's okay. That's good even. Because we are not God. The truth is that Father is only a metaphor for God. God can calm the storms but real fathers, human fathers, cannot tell all of the storms of life to stop, no matter how hard they try, because we are not God, and it's not our job to save the world or even to save our children once they get past a certain age. But we are also not powerless. We are both powerful and vulnerable. And honestly, there is more power in teaching our children how to be vulnerable and courageous than how to be fearless. Fearless is not having enough sense to not do dangerous things. Courage is being afraid but doing the right thing anyway. Vulnerability means showing the next generation how to deal with big feelings, how to cry, how to be gentle, how to experience hurt without lashing out to cause more hurt. I don't know what happened to that young man and his dad. I pray that that young man who is now in his 40s learned to see the courage that it took for his father to live in constant pain. I pray that the father lived to hear his son tell him that he loves him and is proud of him. I pray that the son is teaching his children that who they are matters more than what they do for money. I pray for all of us who need to hear that the most powerful thing we can do is to love one another as God loves us. Amen. Friends, as we enter into this time of prayer, I want to invite you to Lift up the name of a father or father figure in your life. Maybe you want to mention 
one thing that they taught you that you're really grateful for. Also, of course, share your prayer requests, your joys, your concerns, even your vague requests. Share those in the comments if you want to. You don't have to. God knows. God hears the prayers we cannot speak and do not know how to say. Or you can sing, or you can meditate, or you can just breathe. This is your time with God.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, quiet our inner voices of judgment so we might hear your ever-present tune of our belovedness. Help us set aside, if even for a moment, our could've, should've, would'ves, and breathe into this sacred space of togetherness. Hear our prayers, shared and unshared, and answer them in ways beyond our imagining. Thank you, creative God, for in your fluidity, you meet us where we are. Amen. Hello, friends. Thank you for continuing to support the ministries of this church and our community. And as always, for those who can't afford to give right now, please don't. But for those who can, and you're looking for a way to give, here's our menu of options available. So we have the uh, smartphone apps. We have the Give Plus app on there that allows you to give directly to the church, just like online shopping. We have a regular laptop here. Search up the church website. Right here under the Oak Grove logo, there is a Give button. You click on that and it takes you to the Give Plus Church app page where we have, once again, the option of donating to the General Operating Fund or the Corona Relief Fund. If you're on a tablet uh, on the church website, you will have your menu bar here. Click on that and there is a Give option there, which will take you to that same page where you can donate to those funds. And if you have a checkbook, you can write a check and mail it to Oak Grove UMC, P.O. Box 68238, Oak Grove, Oregon 97268. Thank you so much. join me in the offering prayer. Let us pray. Visionary one, these offerings signify our dedication to your story of freedom. Forgive us for when our dreams are too stingy or when our capacity for spaciousness is stifled by old stories. May we have the wisdom and clarity to remove obstacles blocking the flow of justice. May we heal one another into your expansive ways. Amen.
I'm Matthew Rignetta, and I'm thankful that my dad supports me in all of my activities, whether it's Boy Scouts or school. I'm also thankful that when I don't know what I'm doing, he'll he's often there to help me figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Hi, my name is Elliot John Mantalis, and my ideal father figure is John Mantalis, my grandfather. I... He's my father figure because he's kind, considerate, uh, strong, always willing to lend a hand. And I like, love him for that. So, happy Father's Day, Grandpa. I love you. I love you too. Okay. Um, uh, I'm grateful for the fact that they're helping me get a job. And, yeah. So... <laughs> all right so um i'm grateful for my dads because they support me in any way they can and um what else was i gonna say so uh when they uh so what i want to be or what do i want to do they'll support me in that they will say they won't say like oh no that's you don't want to be this or um something like that they'll say okay you want to do that you can do that i'll support you in that mm -hmm. Love it. And that's it. It's great. I love it. What about you, Jade? I'm thinking. She's still thinking. That's fine. Is there something your dads do for you, Jace, that um that you really appreciate? Like what's something they do? Let me play with my friends. Let you play with your friends. That's a great one. Dads that let us um, connect with other people is always good. Anything else that you like about them? <laughs> All right. Great job, guys. Thank you. Hey friends, just a couple announcements this morning. First of all, Zoom coffee hour, link is in the comments, link is in the All Church email. It's just a time to chat, to get to know one another. If you're new to our church in this online season and want to like see some people face to face, uh, come on, come on in. Click the link, join us. Uh, the second announcement is those of you who are really observant, like those of you who have noticed when I knocked my earring out <laughs> last week <laughs> in worship, um, you might notice that my setup is a little bit different today. I have a different angle going on here. Uh, I'm actually, uh, let's see if I can tilt this down. I'm preaching from the pulpit. What? What is this? Um... There's a reason for this. So we have been hard at work setting up the sanctuary to be ready for hybrid, in-person, and online worship. Now that Clackamas County has moved down into lower risk, uh, we're preparing to re-enter the building. This is exciting. This is scary. I I have all, I, I don't even know how many feelings I have. I have all of the feelings. But friends, I want you to know a couple things. One, first of all, it's the 21st century. Church will continue to be online. And that's why we are putting so much work into changing our setup. That's why I am preaching from the lectern, uh, because I need to hold still in order for y'all at home to <laughs> see me uh, and be able to see my eyes when I preach. So we are working on a good hybrid setup that will feel comfortable for everybody who is in person and online, because you all matter. Uh, second of all, when we are in person, we're going to be wearing masks. Um, we've made this choice because we don't want anyone who has been unable to be vaccinated or anyone who uh, is concerned about being vaccinated to be excluded from worship. 
So rather than carting people at the door and saying only the vaccinated may enter, we are going to wear masks, we are going to socially distance, and we're increasing our indoor air circulation to create the safest inside, in-person worship experience we can. So I'm not ready to give you a date yet. I have a date in mind. It's soon. I will say that for sure we are going to be back in the building in person by fall, but we're looking at sooner. So it's coming. We're getting prepared. I'm so excited to see all of you again. Now, receive the sending forth. As we go, may the breath of life bless our undoing and our reclaiming, that we may flourish into a community where holy belonging is accessible to all. Amen.